Yo guys, Punk got another video. So Blizzard said that ZG is releasing in April. I'm assuming that's probably gonna be mid to late April. It could be early, who knows? But nonetheless, basically a month away is not a lot of time at all. So now's the moment to really go over everything. In one of the videos that I made a week ago covering ZG, I mentioned some trinkets and I said specifically that I wasn't gonna go into those because I might as well make an entire video about it. There's actually a lot to talk about. Trinkets are not only some of the most sought after items, but they're also few and far between in classic. There really aren't that many and those that are good that drop in 40 man raids are so highly contested that they're extremely hard to get i'm sure a lot of you guys already know that trying to get that talisman of ephemeral power or any of the top tier blackwing lair trinkets but in zg you can come across them much easier some of them aren't great but some of them are so for this video let's go over all of the trinkets that you can get in zolgarub let's get into it okay so first up let's cover the blue trinkets that actually just drop off some of the random bosses the first one that we've got is called marley's eye and this is something that's super super common you're gonna see it all the time. It drops off High Priestess Marley, who's the spider boss in ZG. It's a very simple trinket. It has an on use which restores 60 mana every 5 seconds for 30 seconds. It's kind of similar to like a mind tap talisman, maybe the Shard of Scale which drops off Onyxia, except it's an on use effect that gives you more mana in the 5 second interval on a 3 minute cooldown. This really isn't the craziest thing ever, but it is quite useful and really if you have nothing better, or in specific fights, it's not the worst thing ever. The next one that we've got is called Nat Pagel's Broken Reel. This trinket, honestly, Sleep is pretty damn useless. You'd actually think that it's quite good for a warlock considering how much they want hit rating, but from what I understand it's really not that powerful at all. It drops off Gazranka which is actually the boss that you fish out of the Zulgarub waters after doing the Nat Pagel quest, and it has an on use effect which increases your chance to hit with spells by 10% for 15 seconds. The one saving grace is that the cooldown is actually only 1 minute and 15 seconds, so you can basically pop it every minute. It could potentially be okay on a warlock since they really really need a hit rating, but again nothing that special. Let's just get these blue trinkets out of the way really quick. Okay, talking about caster trinkets, let's talk about the most important thing and probably the one thing that everybody is going to be going for in the foreseeable future, and that's the Zandalarian Hero Charm. So once you kill Hakar, who's the final boss in ZG, there's an item that drops called the Heart of Hakar. Once you get it, you're able to hand it in for a world buff, and the reward is a choice between one of three trinkets. One of them being the Zandalarian Hero Badge, which increases your armor by 2000 and defense skill by 30 for 20 seconds, and every time you take damage, the bonus that you get is going to be reduced by 200 armor and 3 defense, so 10% loss each hit. Then you've got the Zandalarian Hero Medallion, and this is actually somewhat interesting. It increases your melee and ranged damage by 40 for 20 seconds, and each time you hit, the bonus is reduced by 2. This is actually quite decent on hunters and rogues and melee. It's not the greatest trinket in the world, but it's definitely not bad, especially on a hunter. And it might even be better than I think on a warrior or a rogue, but really the crown jewel, the one trinket that everybody is gunning after is the Zandalarian and hero charm and this is an on use effect that increases your spell damage by 204 and your healing by up to 408 for 20 seconds every time you cast the spell the bonus is reduced by 17 very similar to the talisman of ephemeral power except it starts off with a ton of spell power which is going to slowly reduce as you cast more spells but it does even out or average out to quite a bit of sp so these next trinkets are the hardest ones to get and that's because you only have access to one of the bosses that you need every two weeks so there's four bosses specifically there's Grillek, Hazara, Renataki, and Wushule. Every two weeks it's gonna rotate to a next boss, meaning let's say April 1st ZG releases, from the 1st to the 15th of April you're gonna have access to one boss, the 16th to the 30th another boss, and then the next month after that in May the 1st to the 15th again another boss, and then the 16th to the 30th and so on and so forth. Every two weeks there's gonna be a new boss that comes, and apparently the rotation is consistent so it is gonna be quite predictable. Now in order to summon one of the bosses, you need a Gurubashi Mojo Madness, which is created by an alchemist. It requires one blood of heroes, one massive mojo, six powerful mojo, and one black lotus. After you have the mojo madness, you can now summon the boss. Each boss is going to drop a quest item, and once you've collected all of them, you can then combine that with a class doll that drops in ZG, you loot them off these little pits, you can then attain a class specific trinket. Some of these are average, some of them suck, and some of them are incredible. But let's go over for all of them. The first one is the Hazaraz Charm of Healing. This is the Priest Charm. It's an on use effect which reduces the casting time of your greater healing spell by 40% and reduces the mana cost of all of your healing spells by 5 for 15 seconds. On first glance, this doesn't seem that great, but situationally, it could be quite good. On a very short fight where the tank takes a ton of damage and your sole responsibility is keeping the tank alive, this could be quite decent if you just want to spam graders into the main tank over and over again. It's kind of similar to the Mind Quick 
Blinding Gem for Mages, or the Scroll of Blinding Light for the Paladins out in BWL, but it only affects the Greater Heal, so it is way more situational, but you might find a use for it. Now the next one is Hazara's Charm of Destruction, and this is for the Warlocks. It has an on use effect which increases the critical hit chance of your destruction spells by 10% for 20 seconds. This one is quite situational, you can maybe find some use in PvP with this, I'm not sure if you can stack this with the Zandalarian Hero Charm, but theoretically, in an ideal world, if you could, you can increase your chance to crit by 10%, as well as popping the increased spell power. That could be a situationally cheesy trinket comp, I guess we'll find out. Now the next one that we've got is the Hazara's Charm of Magic, and this is for the mages. Increases your critical hit chance of your arcane spells by 5%, and increases the critical damage of your arcane spells by 50% for 20 seconds. This is absolute dog doo doo, no one should ever get this, who cares, we're gonna move right on. Now the next one that we've got is Wuxiulei's Charm of Nature, and this is for druids. It's an on-use effect that reduces the cast time of your healing touch spell by 40% and reduces the mana cost of your healing spells by 5% for 15 seconds. This is actually quite good for druids. Depending on the build that you're playing on a druid, you could be focused on regrowth, although it's hard to sustain the mana in that build. But for the most part, a lot of druids are actually just spamming different ranks of healing touch. It's their main heal, especially once you get to AQ40+, plus, where you get access to a couple idols that make healing touch spam way more viable. I'll post them up here on the screen. The Wuxiulei's Charm of Nature, again, in a tank healing scenario on a short fight, is actually quite valuable. Blasting out really big healing touch heals in two, potentially even less than two seconds, is a ridiculous amount of HPS during the 15 seconds of this trinket pop. So so this trinket, I wouldn't underestimate it, you probably don't want to use it on every single fight, but I guarantee you, you'll find certain scenarios where it's actually quite useful. Alright, so next up, we've got Wuxiulei's Charm of Spirits. This is a shaman trinket with an on use effect that increases the damage dealt by your lightning shield spell by 100% for 20 seconds. This is very situational, but if you paid attention to the CDL, the Classic Dueler League at the start of Classic, a lot of shamans were actually rocking a defensive shield build against rogues and different classes while using a force reactive disc and just reflect a ton of magic damage on hit. This makes that way more viable. Lightning Shield already hits pretty hard. Imagine doubling the output damage with that 100% modifier. That's a ton of damage on every single hit. So this in a PvP scenario, at least in the right scenario, is not only good, but can literally win a fight for you. Now the next trinket we've got is Grillex Charm of Might. This is for warriors, and it's an on use effect that increases your rage by 30 with a 3 minute cooldown. This is kind of meh, it's basically like a mighty rage potion, except I think even less rage, but it could be alright. Maybe in a PvP environment, who knows, you might find a use for it, but it's definitely not the best trinket on the list. Now the next one that we've got is called Grillex Charm of Valor, and this is a paladin trinket with an on use effect that increases the critical hit chance of your holy spells by 10% for 15 seconds. This one, again, pretty mediocre. Could be quite good if you're a Shokadin, who knows? And I'm also quite sure that the increased holy spell crit applies to your heals as well. So potentially, the 10% increased spell crit also applies to heals as well. So I guess it's kind of like double value for a paladin, where it's going to increase your crit, which is going to allow you to heal for more, considering the crit modifier on your actual healing output. And then once you crit more often, you're going to be getting back mana for every spell that you crit. It's not terrible. It's it's not amazing either, you might want it and you might find some use for it, who knows. This is something that people have to do the math on and maybe find a scenario where it could be potentially useful. But of course I kept the best for last, and those are the Renataki trinkets, I've covered them before, but these are the best trinkets in the entire dungeon next to the Zandalarian Hero Charm. The first one that we've got is called the Renataki's Charm of Beasts, and this is readiness before readiness was a thing. It's a hunter trinket with an on use effect that instantly clears the cooldown of aim shot, multi shot, volley, and R arcane shot. This trinket is absolutely phenomenal. It's one of the best PvP hunter trinkets in the entire game, and for parsing or topping DPS on a very short fight, let's say Lucifron or basically anything in Molten Core that lasts like 30 seconds in a speed clear environment, getting a full combo out, resetting your cooldowns, getting a second full combo out, and getting the multi shot two times in a row will give you more damage than pretty much anything else out there. This trinket's absolutely busted, and it opens up hunters to pretty much one shot most people that they trap. You can scatter trap your enemy, go max distance, full combo, reset your cooldowns, another combo, or a second multi-shot off the back end, and it's just one of the greatest trinkets out there. Now the next is the Renataki's Charm of Trickery, and this is basically Thistle Tea in trinket form. Once again, a PvP trinket that every top rogue will absolutely drool for, and that's because it allows you to get to the combo points that you need before the stunlock ends. So sometimes, depending on RNG, on energy ticks, or extra combo 
points on your cheap shot kidney shot you either might not have enough combo points to get a full kidney or off the kidney you might not have enough combo points to eviscerate or enough energy to eviscerate before the stun ends this compensates for that during your stun lock rotation you can pop this for a little boost in energy and it allows you to combo way more smooth as a cold blood hemo rogue or even a dagger rogue since it's 60 energy it gives you literally an extra backstab this trinket is how you one shot people effectively and consistently within your stun lock combos probably the best pvp trinket in the entire game for rogues and i'd say if your focus is pvp and you play a rogue then you want to get going after this immediately so that's pretty much the video guys i hope you enjoyed it there's a decent amount to cover in terms of trinkets for zg specifically because of all these class trinkets and the little process that you have to go through in order to gain access to them by doing all of those little mini bosses that you summon with the mojo madness it's a little bit time gated considering you only get one boss every two weeks so it's going to take you about two months to actually get this trinket but it's definitely worth it of course depending on your class some of them are dog tier but some of them are god tier i well, hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did please make sure to leave a like comment subscribe you know the drill soldiers and of course hit the notification bell to be notified every single time i post a new video straight out of the render oven and with that said thanks for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one peace Thank you.